Okay, let us have a short review of partial differentiation. Supposing we are given a function f in the variables x and y defined by c equal to f of x, y. The partial derivative of z or f with respect to x is denoted by partial f with respect to x. Similarly, the partial derivative of f with respect to y is denoted by partial f with respect to y. By definition, the partial of f with respect to x is equal to the limit of f of x plus delta xy minus f of xy all over delta x as delta x approaches 0. In the like manner, the partial of f with respect to y is the limit of f of x y plus delta y minus f of xy all over delta y as delta y approaches 0. Now, without using the limit definition, we can determine the partial of f with respect to x by just getting the derivative of f with respect to x with all the y terms treated as constant. Similarly, the partial of f with respect to y is just the derivative of the entire function f with respect to y with all x terms treated as constants. Let us have the following example. Say we are given f of xy equal to x raised to 4y cubed plus xy minus x squared plus 3y. We determine the partial of f with respect to x, the partial of f with respect to y. So partial of f with respect to x is equal to we treat y cube in the first term, we treat y cube as a constant, we differentiate the x term, x to the fourth, and its derivative is 4x cubed. So we just multiply it by the constant y cube. For the second term, we differentiate x with respect to x, which is 1, multiplied by y minus the derivative of x squared is 2x plus 3y is a pure constant as there is no x term so its derivative is 0. Next, we determine the partial of f with respect to y. So for the first term, we differentiate y cubed which is 3y squared multiplied to x to the fourth. So that is 3x to the 4th y squared. xy, derivative of y is 1 times the constant x, that will be equal to x. And x squared is a pure function of x whose derivative with respect to y will be 0. Finally, the derivative of 3y with respect to y is 3. 
we can also get the higher order partial derivatives. So let us also find the second partial of f with respect to x and the second partial of f with respect to y. Let us also determine the second partial of f with respect to y and then with respect to x. The second partial of f with respect to x with respect to y. Okay. So for the second partial of f with respect to x, we're just taking the partial of 4x cubed y cubed plus y minus 2x with respect to x. And that is equal to derivative of x cubed is 3x squared times 4. That will be 12x squared times the constant y cubed. Derivative of y with respect to x will be 0. And of negative 2x, that will be negative 2. Then the second partial of f with respect to y. So we take the partial derivative of 3x to the 4th y squared plus x plus 3 with respect again to y. That is equal to the derivative of y squared is 2y times 3x to the 4th. That will be 6x to the 4th y. Then x plus 3 is a pure function of x whose derivative with respect to y will be 0. Okay? So let us then determine the other two higher order partial derivatives. We take the second partial of f with respect to y with respect to x. So we're taking the partial derivative of partial derivative of f with respect to x is 4x cubed y cubed plus y minus 2x. Now, with respect to y. So, a derivative of y cubed is 3y squared times 4. That will be 12x cubed y squared. Derivative of y with respect to y is 1 of negative 2x, that will be 0. Next, the second partial of f with respect to x with respect to y. We take the partial of 3x to the fourth y squared plus x plus 3. Now, with respect to x. So derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed times 3. That will be 12x cubed y squared. The partial derivative of x with respect to x is 1. And the partial of derivative of 3 with respect to x being a pure constant will be 0. And so what do we see here? We see that the second partial of f with respect to y and then with respect to x is the same as the second partial of f with respect to x with respect to y. So this only shows that the order of partial differentiation does not matter. Huh? As we have seen, the second partial of f with respect to y with respect to x is equal to the second partial of f with respect to x with respect to y. The other notation for the second partial of f with respect to y with respect to x is f sub x and y. So get the partial derivative first with respect to x and then with respect to y. We also have the third partial of f with respect to x with respect to y with respect to x. So we can write this as f of x, then y, and then x. How do we then get the differential? 
how do we then get the differential of f? So if c is equal to f of x, y, the differential of c is equal to the partial of f with respect to x dx plus the partial of f with respect to y dy. That is how we write or obtain the differential of f. This is of course equivalent to the differential of f. Okay. So supposing that our c is equal to e raised to xy plus x squared y. Let us find the differential of c. To find the differential of c is to determine first the partial of c with respect to x. So the derivative of e to the xy is e to the xy, and the derivative of xy with respect to x is y. No? Remember, y is a constant, so the derivative of x is 1 times y. Plus, the partial derivative of x squared y with respect to x is 2xy. We also determine the partial of c with respect to y. So, the derivative of e to the xy is e to the xy, and the derivative of xy with respect to y will be equal to x. Plus, the derivative of x squared y with respect to y will be equal to x squared. So, from this, we can write the differential of c equal to y e raised to xy plus 2xy dx plus x e to the xy plus x squared dy. You can write this in a simplified form by factoring y from y e to the xy plus 2xy. That will be e to the xy plus 2x dx plus in here we shall factor x times e to the xy plus x dy.